The Stock Panel provides access to a selection of stock libraries directly within Affinity Designer. By default, this is a hidden panel, so to locate it, we just need to go to the window and select Stock. Now we have the option to keep it as a floating panel. We can combine it with our other panels, or we can dock it to the side of the workspace instead. The first thing we need to do is select the stock library we wish to search from. Let's do this by selecting from the drop down box here on the left, and we can choose between Pexels or Pixabay. For this example, let's go with Pixabay. At this point, it's worth mentioning that any of the images found here are from third party providers and not directly linked to the Affinity apps. When adding these images to your design work, you'll need to agree to the relevant image provider's terms and conditions. So by ticking this box here, we're then able to continue and search for something to include in our design. I've put together this flyer for a street art workshop, but I need some imagery to go behind my text. So let's head to the search bar and type in spray paint to see what we can find. I can keep scrolling and we can see that the list will keep refreshing until we run out of images. This is quite a popular search term, so we have plenty of options to choose from. Once we've found something we want to use, we can then click and drag to include it in our design. It's also worth mentioning that you can now create a new document simply by dragging your chosen image to the toolbar at the top. This is quite handy if you wanted to quickly experiment with an image or you wanted to prepare one of these stock images separately to be used at a later date. Let's close this for now, go back to our design, and let's drag our image into our canvas area. I've gone for this more abstract image as I feel that will work quite well with the text layout I've already put together. So first of all, let's rotate the image with shift held to constrain the rotation angles. And let's begin to move it into place. I have snapping enabled, which as you can see, has helped me to make sure this stock image is perfectly in the middle of my working area. Let's enlarge it, holding command on Mac or control on Windows to enlarge the image from the center point making sure it fits nicely in our canvas area. So let's focus on the image itself first. And one quick solution is to simply use the color panel to add a non-destructive color overlay. Let's select the image and go and choose a color in the color panel. This can be quite effective, but in this case, I actually want to try something else, which I think will work better. We can reset that by clearing the color here. And let's try adding a layer adjustment. We can go to the layer panel, click our layer adjustment icon, and first of all, let's try brightness and contrast. This is a really simple way to just boost some of the levels within the image and try and add some more contrast between the colors to help them all stand out a bit more. So this is looking better, but now let's try adding a HSL adjustment as well. I'm going to start by adjusting the hue shift slider while it's set to the default color range. And I'm also going to adjust the saturation shift too, as this really helps the image to pop out even more. I'm quite happy with how this is looking, but now let's try it in context with our text information. We can do this by clicking on the group I have here and dragging it above our stock image. This is working quite well, but some of the white text gets a bit lost against some of the white spray paint. So one last thing I'd like to try is adding a gradient map adjustment instead. The default settings here are not quite what we're looking for, but we can easily change these by selecting one of these nodes and choosing a different color instead. Let's start on the right here, change the left color, change the middle color. And we can see that's already made a drastic improvement to the image. I'll just make a few more tweaks until I'm happy with the final design. I feel like that's working quite nicely now and has enabled my text and other important information to really stand out against that abstract spray paint stock image. So we can now close that and move on to the final step. If we needed to locate any information about the stock imagery, we can do this by clicking on the image itself in the layer panel and we can head over to the context toolbar. Here you can check the resolution, scale, and return the image to its original size. You can replace the image and you can open its stock URL, taking you straight to the Pixabay website in case you needed to reference the original image creator or just download the image separately in the future. On top of that, if you're working with lots of different stock imagery, it might be useful to know that anything taken from the stock panel can also be located in the resource manager too which just gives you another way to easily find the original source URL or enables you to change your image from embedded to linked instead, or you can collect multiple images into one specific folder. So that was a brief overview of the stock panel and a few tips and tricks to get the best results in your design work. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.